Hey, I'm Ray, and this is The Kitchen. Today we're talking about why pound cake is called pound cake. So, getting into pound cake. Have you ever had it? That may seem like a silly question, but pound cake isn't, like, the most popular dessert these days. Um, I think like one of the first times I had pound cake, I was younger and I remember having it once, but the one time that I clearly remember having pound cake was store-bought cut up to dip in melted chocolate. So if you've ever been someplace where there's a chocolate fountain, pound cake very well may have been an option for dipping because it's, it's a dense simple, delicately sweet white cake. And so it, uh, it can stand up to the weight of some delicious melted chocolate. So like I said, it is a simple, sweet, dense white cake, and it's normally made in either a loaf pan or a bunt pan. Um, the first pound cake we think was made in the 1700s in Europe. And then American, America became a thing, and it was first documented in America in a cookbook called American Cookery. Or was it a cookbook? Whatever, whatever this literature was, it was called American Cookery, and they published a recipe for pound cake in 1795 with a very unique ingredient, which I'll get to. But just a little fun fact that you can partake in is that March 4th is National Pound Cake Day. So mark your calendar, March 4th, we're all gonna celebrate. So why is pound cake called pound cake? I'm, I didn't think of this as an option of why it was called pound cake, but I'm sure some people may have thought about this, is that since it's a very, it's a very heavy cake, so the cake itself weighed a pound, but that is not correct. So the reason we believe it was called pound cake is because the weight of each ingredient was a pound. Now the base recipe has four ingredients, butter, sugar, flour, and eggs. So to try and give you a sense of how much of each of those ingredients is equal to a pound. So I'm pretty sure most of us know what a pound of butter looks like. It's four sticks of butter. It's usually the size that butter is sold in commercially at the grocery store. A pound of sugar is about two cups flour, I was thinking about this. So in today's day and age, a lot of home cooks just use white flour or all-purpose flour. But thinking back to the 1700s, in my mind, I feel like a lot of people ground their own flour back in the day and they may have sifted it, but stone ground flour is usually whole wheat flour. The germ and all the parts of the wheat are still on there and so there's extra weight to it versus today's white flour. So I looked up both the weight of whole wheat flour and all-purpose or white flour and so a pound of whole wheat flour is three and a half cups and a pound of all-purpose flour, or white flour, is four cups. And then finally we have eggs. And so today in baking, most recipes call for large eggs. And a large egg is approximately two ounces. So for a pound of eggs today, that would be eight eggs. So I was able to look at the recipe verbatim from American Cookery. 
on gutenberg.org. So I feel like if it's from gutenberg.org, it's pretty legit. But the recipe is, and I quote, one pound sugar, one pound butter, one pound flour, one pound or 10 eggs, rose water, one gill, spices to your taste. Watch it well. It will bake in a slow oven in 15 minutes. So let me, let's break that down a little bit. So first, this recipe says 10 eggs. That would be either somewhere between one of today's like medium and small eggs to reach a pound of using 10 eggs. And then rose water. Have you ever eaten anything with rose water in it? One of my coworkers once brought in some bread that his mom had made and it had rose water in it. And I was like, if I'm remembering correctly, I feel like I was a little hesitant to try it, but I tried it and it was, it was surprisingly lovely. Like it was just a hint of rose and yeah, I would totally eat that again. So rose water, one gill. So I looked up what one gill is. One gill is equal to four fluid ounces, which is about one half cup. And then it just says spices to your taste. So in my mind, I'm thinking of warm spices like Cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, cloves, allspice, cardamom, mace. I've never cooked with mace. Have you guys ever cooked with mace? Let me know. And then it will bake in a slow oven. So I believe it's Merriam-Webster defined a slow oven as between 250 degrees and 325 degrees. For all my bakers and all of you who cook out there, 75 degrees is a big range. Now, I know that we're in the 1700s, like, we don't have the digital, (laughs) we don't have the digital screens on our ovens back then with the sensor inside the oven that can heat it up to the exact temperature we need it. So that range makes sense. And then only 15 minutes. Now, if you were to try and cook a loaf of pound cake in either a loaf pan or a bun pan today at in an oven at 250 degrees or between 250 and 325 for only 15 minutes, you would have a very unbaked pound cake. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, a pound of each of the ingredients, either they split it up into multiple smaller pans, option one, or they had a really big pan and it was a really shallow cake, option two. So if you think about it, if you make like a sheet cake, I've never made a sheet cake, like an entire sheet cake. Let me know, my bakers out there, how long does a normal sheet cake bake? So if that's the case, maybe 15 minutes makes sense. But again, the option for having multiple different pans, they just didn't specify it in the recipe. So I have questions. So that was how pound cake was made. How is pound cake made today? Well, I have only ever made pound cake once, and it turned out delicious. I made it on my YouTube channel, Recipes with Ray. I will link that down below in the show notes for you guys to check out if you want. So jumping back for a moment, the timeline between the first recorded pound cake in America (laughs) And today, when I'm making pound cake, so you may have noticed that 
the ingredients flour, sugar, butter, eggs. There's no moisture added. So we already know it's a pretty dense cake. But in the 1800s, that's when it looks like people started adding extra moisture to their pound cake recipe. And in my recipe that I've made, we add milk. And then in the 1900s, baking powder was added, which I found interesting. So you you can probably find a pound cake recipe with baking powder in it. My recipe does not have any added leavener. No baking powder, no baking soda. So if you make pound cake, let me know. Do you use baking powder or baking soda? But on to the recipe that I've made. My recipe has one cup of butter, one and a half cups of sugar, three large eggs, two cups of white flour, and a third cup of milk. So looking at my recipe in pounds, my recipe has a half pound of butter, three quarters pound of sugar, three eighths pound, so not quite a half pound, three eighths pound of eggs, and a half pound of flour. And then we have the added milk. So it's not, my recipe is not a one-to-one ratio, but I'm curious now, how would it turn out if I did like a half pound cake? What if I did a half pound of butter, a half pound of sugar, half pound of eggs, and a half pound of flour? So it would be less sweet because the recipe I have is three quarters of a pound of sugar. So I would be reducing the sugar content and I would be adding an extra egg. I'm curious, I really might have to just try that out (laughs) and see how it goes. But one thing that I noticed is like, in your normal baking, just generic baking, most ingredients have vanilla extract. And I was shocked when I made my pound cake that there was no vanilla in it. And I remember baking it and thinking, oh no, I forgot to add the vanilla. And so I went to see how much I needed and it wasn't in the recipe. So I was like, okay, well, I don't know how this is going to turn out, but it was delicious. Now, one thing I will say, I don't know how much of a difference it makes. I think it does make a marginal difference. Have you ever, or do you, use raw cane sugar. So when you go in the baking aisle and you just get your big bag of white sugar, it is white. And I tried, the first time I tried raw cane sugar, it's a little beige yellow color, more beige. And if you get a chance, if you haven't, if you have raw cane sugar, and white normal sugar, and you haven't done this yet, give each of them a smell. The raw cane sugar has such a sweet, pleasant aroma, and then your bulk white sugar doesn't really have any smell to it. So when I made my pound cake, I did use raw cane sugar. So I'm sure it gave it a little bit of extra flavor, just because you can smell the difference in the raw cane sugar. But I think it would have been delicious still if I'd have just used normal white sugar. So as time goes on, we make varieties, a whole bunch of different varieties of things that we like. So the same thing happened with pound cake. And I'm going to list off a bunch of different pound cake varieties And leave me a comment over on YouTube um, what flavors you've eaten or what flavors you've made and what flavor has been your favorite. Um, So, of course, you have pound cake recipes that you do add vanilla 
or you add sour cream, which might sound funky, but sour cream makes cake very moist. Um, so then, so a pretty standard like vanilla pound cake, but then you have chocolate, lemon, key lime, cranberry almond, brown sugar, banana. Now I didn't click into this recipe. I don't know if they were actually adding banana chunks or if they just purchased banana flavoring. I think it was banana flavoring, but you never know. Some people might be adding real bananas. Then you can do blueberry lemon pound cake, a generic citrus pound cake, seven up pound cake, buttermilk pan pound cake. I almost said buttermilk pancakes. If you like buttermilk pancakes, you might very well like buttermilk pound cake. A peppermint cream pound cake. Just imagine at Christmas time. A German pound cake. So you add cardamom, lemon, almond, and vanilla. That sounds nice. An eggnog pound cake. This is another one that I didn't click on the recipe, but it was served with a custard sauce and nutmeg. So I'm wondering if the custard sauce was made using eggnog and then was eggnog actually put into the pound cake? Because if you used my recipe, my recipe calls for a third cup of milk, you could just use a third cup of eggnog maybe? Hmm. Then cranberry orange pound cake, spiced rum pound cake, coconut with lime glaze pound cake, sparkling cider pound cake, which would be an excellent idea because I'm getting like apple cider donuts at the apple orchard slash pumpkin patch with fall coming up in the next couple months. Yes, that would be perfect for a seasonal, a perfect seasonal pound cake. And then hazelnut pear pound cake. That one intrigues me. But now that you're thoroughly hungry for pound cake, go ahead and share this episode with someone who loves pound cake. I will link, <clears throat> I will leave a link below in the show notes. Um, these, the ideas that I listed above came from uh, Taste of Home and they had the links to all the different recipes. So I will leave the link to Taste of Home down below in the show notes. If you like this episode, I'd be grateful if you would rate and review it over on Apple or Spotify. And after you rate and review The Kitchen with Ray, go ahead and listen to one of my previous episodes. And lastly, Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you. And he's ready whenever you are. <laughs> <laughs>